Story 51, but it's too long. A mother hoped to marry her son off to a woman who was quite well-to-do, but older than him. Her son was reluctant. But what is the matter with her? asked the mother. Her past, replied the son. Her past is entirely honourable. That may be so, but it's too long. Story 52. The Farmer On a drive in the country, a city slicker noticed a farmer lifting one of his pigs up to an apple tree and holding the pig there as it ate one apple after another. The farmer repeated this with a second and a third pig. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, said the city slicker. But if you just shook the tree so the apples fell to the ground, wouldn't it save a lot of time? Time, said the farmer. What does time matter to a pig? Story 53. Why are you so amused? An impassioned clergyman was visiting a country church and began his address with a stirring reminder. Everybody in this parish is going to die. The evangelist was discomfited to notice a man in the front pew who was smiling broadly. Why are you so amused? He asked. I'm not in this parish, replied the man. I'm just visiting my sister for the weekend. Story 54. Aren't you lucky you didn't catch two? An American had been fishing for two weeks in Ireland without getting a bite. On the last day of his vacation, he caught a small salmon. Turlo, he said to his guide later. That salmon cost me more than $500. Well now, sir, Turlo comforted him. Aren't you lucky you didn't catch two? Story 55. Halfway. What do you get when you cross the Atlantic with the Titanic? Halfway. Story 56. Two different colored socks. Why are you wearing two different colored socks? I have another pair, just like these at home. Story 57 Then it was not my wife. Overheard at the pub, I dreamt about your wife. Yeah? What did she say? Not a word. Then it was not my wife. Story 58. What's wrong with me? Patient entered a doctor's office with a cucumber up his nose, a carrot in his left ear, and a banana in his right ear. Doc? He asked. What's wrong with me? Simple, the doctor replied. You aren't eating right. Story 59, A Cabbage 
My colleague, who had little experience in sewing, asked my advice about making a costume for her daughter's first school concert. The teacher's note read, Dear parent, your daughter is a cabbage. Please see enclosed pattern. Story 60, The World's Best Swordsman At an exhibition of The World's Best Swordsman, the third-place fencer took the stage. A fly was released, and with an arc of his sword, he cut the fly in half. The crowd cheered. Then the second-place man sliced a fly into quarters. A hush fell in anticipation of the world's greatest swordsman. His blade came down in a mighty arc, but the insect continued on its way. The crowd was aghast. The great swordsman had missed his target completely, yet he continued to smile. Why are you happy? Someone yelled. You missed! Ah replied the swordsman. You weren't watching very carefully. The fly lives, yes, but he will never be our father. Story 61. The Cha-Cha. A frantic father rushed to the bedside of his teenage son at the local hospital. The boy had broken an arm and was covered with cuts and bruises. What happened, son? asked the father. Did you have a wreck on the way home from your date? Oh, pop. The boy groaned. I was doing the cha-cha with my girl when her old man came home. He's deaf and couldn't hear the music, so he threw me through the front window. Story 62. Well, how far is it to the next house? We're sure you've heard about the traveling salesman whose car broke down in a rainstorm. He ran to the closest farmhouse and knocked on the door. A grizzled old farmer answered, and the salesman pleaded for a place to stay the night. I can give you a room, said the farmer. But I haven't got a daughter for you to sleep with. Oh, said the salesman. Well, how far is it to the next house? Story 63, maybe a thousand feet. The zoo built a special eight-foot enclosure for its newly acquired kangaroo, but the next morning, the animals found hopping around outside. The height of the fence was increased to 15 feet, but the kangaroo got out again. Exasperated, the zoo director had the height increased to 30 feet, but the kangaroo still escaped. A giraffe asked the kangaroo, How high do you think they'll build that fence? I don't know said the kangaroo. Maybe a thousand feet if they keep leaving the gate unlocked. Story 64. Even Shakespeare. Honey, I don't want to hear you using such bad words anymore. But mommy... Even Shakespeare used them. Then you're not allowed to play with him anymore. Story 65, Shore Sign. What's a shore sign you're flying the wrong airline? The pilot has a heart attack, and the air traffic controller talks with the flight attendant through takeoff. Story 66 Theology Scholar 
a young woman brought her fiancé to meet her parents. After dinner, her father asked the young man into his study for a chat. So, what are your plans? He began. I'm a theology scholar, the young man replied. Admirable, the father said. But what will you do to provide a nice home for my daughter? I will study, and God will provide, he explained. And how will you afford to raise children? God will provide. The men left the study and the mother asked her husband, how did it go? He has no money or employment plans, the father said. But on the other hand, he thinks I'm God. Story 67. Let's say nine months then. The doctor was handling the results of a number of costly tests to his patients. I have some bad news, he said. I give you six months to live. But I don't have any insurance, gasped the patient. How can I afford to pay you in time? All right, soothed the physician. Let's say nine months then. Story 68, but I want number three. Mac died at the controls of his plane and went to Pilot's Hell, where he found a hideous devil and three doors. The devil was busy escorting other pilots to various hell rooms. I'll be right back. Don't go away, said the devil and vanished. Sneaking over to the first door, Mac peeked in and saw a cockpit where the pilot was condemned to forever run through the pre-flight checks. He slammed that door and peeked into the second. There, alarms rang and red lights flashed while a pilot had to avoid one emergency after another. Unable to imagine a worse fate, Mac cautiously opened the third door. He was amazed to see many beautiful, scantily clad flight attendants answering to a captain's every whim. He quickly returned to his place seconds before the devil reappeared. Okay, Mac, said the devil. Which door will it be? Number one or number two? But I want number three, answered Mac. Sorry, said the devil. You can't have door number three. That's flight attendant's hell. Story 69, A Wonderful Dream. The husband was telling a story to his wife. Last night I had a wonderful dream. What was it about, my dear? Getting married for the second time. Story 70, Good Behaved Husband The wife came home to visit her daughter, who had married last month. Returning home, she said to her husband, Our pitiful daughter was wounded at her face so gravely that I couldn't recognize her. The husband asked, Why? Did she get in a traffic accident? No, her husband beat her. Did she forage her husband's wallet for money? How do you know? shouted the wife. She is your daughter, so that her behavior is like yours. I know it like the back of my hand. The wife was angry and shouted, If you are well talented, why don't you do that to me? The husband sighed. In this world, there aren't all husbands who are as good behaved as me. Seventy-one, money and friends. Since he lost his money, half his friends don't know him anymore. And the other half? They don't know yet that he has lost it. <laughs> Story 71. 
Story 72. Father wants to go to bed. Yeah. Next door neighbor's little boy. Father said, could you lend him your cassette player for tonight? Heavy metal enth enthusiast. Have you a party on? Little boy. Oh no, father only wants to go to bed. Story 73. The river isn't deep. A stranger on horseback came to a river with which he was unfamiliar. The traveler asked a youngster. Youngster, is it deep? No, replied the boy, and the rider started to cross, but soon found that he and his horse had to swim for their lives. When the traveler reached the other side, he turned and shouted, I thought you said it wasn't deep. It isn't, was the boy's reply. It only takes grandfather's ducks up to their middles. Story 74. A policeman and a reporter. Country policeman at the scene of a murder. You can't come in here. Reporter. But I've been sent to do the murder. Country policeman. Well, you're too late. The murder's been done. Story 75. A cow's grazing. That, sir, is a cow grazing. Where's the grass? The cow has eaten it. But where's the cow? Don't suppose you'd be a fool enough to stay there after she'd eaten all the grass, do you? Story 76. Let's work together. Can you tell me how to get to the post office? That's just where I want to go. Let's work together. You go south and I'll go north and we'll report progress every time we meet. Story 77. The French people have difficulty. Did you have any difficulty with your French in Paris? No, but the French people did. Story 78. A mistake. How can I demonstrate that I once made a mistake in my life? Easy. It was the time when you took your girlfriend to the marriage registry office. Story 79. The Hen and the Dog Sorry, old man that my hen got loose and scratched up your garden. That's all right, my dog ate your hen. Fine, I just ran over your dog and killed him. Story 80, Straight Friendship. Once a friend of mine and I agreed that it would be helpful for each of us to tell each other all of our faults. How did it work? We haven't spoken for five years. Story 81. She's my wife. 
One of the guests turned to a man by his side to criticize the singing of the woman who was trying to entertain them. What a terrible voice. Do you know who she is? Yes. Was the answer. She's my wife. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. Of course, it isn't her voice, really. It's the stuff she has to sing. I wonder who wrote that awful song. I did. Was the answer. Story 82, Valor and Discretion. What's the difference between valor and discretion? Well, to go to a swell restaurant without tipping the waiter would be valor. I see. And a discretion? That would be to dine at a different restaurant the next day. Story 83. Flattering. Ah, and what is this? It is superb. What soul? What expression? Yeah, that's where I clear the paint br off my brushes. Story 84. Cigar Fruit. Gardener? This is a tobacco plant in full flower, madam. Dear old lady, how very interesting. And how long will it be before the cigars are ripe? Story 85. Time. Don't you agree that time is the greatest healer? He may be, but he's certainly no beauty specialist. Story 86. Borrowing money. Glad to see you, old man. Can you lend me five dollars? Sorry, but I haven't a cent with me today. And at home? They're all very well, thank you. Very well. Story 87. How many... Knaves. Story 87. How many knaves live in this street? A wag asked his friend. How many knaves do you suppose live in this street beside yourself? Beside myself? Replied the other. Do you mean to insult me? Well then. Said the first. How many do you reckon including yourself? Story 88. Life-size enlargements. Do you make life-size enlargements of snapshots? That's our speciality. Fine. Here's a picture I took of the pyramid. Story 89. Terrible Experience. Miss Gushwin, it must be wonderful to be a parachute jumper. I suppose you've had some terrible experiences. Parachutist, fed up with her? Yes, miss. Terrible. Why, once I came down where there was a sign, keep off the grass.
Story 90. Don't be so conceited. I keep hearing the word idiot. I hope you are not referring to me. Don't be so conceited. As if there are no other idiots in the world. Story 91. Anything will do. Well, all right. Since you insist, what shall I play? Anything you like. It's only to annoy the neighbors. Story 92. Naming animals. Adam and Eva were naming the animals of the earth when along came a rhinoceros. What should we call this one? Let's call it a rhinoceros. Why? Well, because it looks more like a rhinoceros than anything we've named yet. Story 93, Statues. Country Cousin. After prolonged inspection of building operations. I don't see the sense of putting statues on top of your building. Friend, statues? Those aren't statues. They're bricklayers. Story 94, Man-Eating Lion. Is that a man-eating lion? Yes, lady, but we're short of men this week, so all he gets is beef. Story 95. Identified. This check is doubtless all right, said the paying teller politely. But have you anything about you by which you could be identified? Pretty young girl faltered. I have a mole high above my left knee. Story 96. It wasn't me. Hello, Frank. I thought you were dead. Oh, they did get a story around that I was dead, but it was another man. I knew it wasn't me as soon as I heard of it. Story 97, A Great Discovery Purely by accident, I have made one of the greatest discoveries, said the scientist. May I ask what it was? I found, said the scientist, that by keeping a bottle of ink handy, when you can use a fountain pen, just like any other pen, without all the trouble of filling it. Story 98 has the dinner bell rung. My dear sir, you flatter me lingering to hear the remainder of my tale when the other passengers dashed away at the sound of the dinner bell, said the tale tourist to his one remaining listener. What? Has the dinner bell rung? asked the other as he jumped to his feet and dashed towards the dining room. Story 99, a popular song. So that is a popular song he's singing. It was before he sang it. <laughs> Story 
Story 100, A Portrait. And that is a portrait of my great-great-grandfather. Wonderful. Why doesn't he look any older than you?